then I'll start. All right. All right. So good evening. Um, welcome to the session on gut health, fermentation, and how to make your own sauerkraut. Uh, it's my favorite uh, ferment. It's a superfood. It's something that uh, I like to consume uh, almost every day. And uh, whenever you open my fridge, you'll always find a bottle of sa uh, sauerkraut. Um, I love giving it as gifts to friends. And it's um, super easy to make. Uh, minimal ingredients, no starter required. And uh, before I dive into actually making the sauerkraut, uh, let me share my screen and get started with the basics uh, about even before making sauerkraut, why I have it in the first place. What's the whole thing about gut health? So let me share screen. Can you see the poster? Learn to ferment your own sauerkraut. Great. So the pointers, everybody knows, everyone's familiar. I just request for the camera to be on. So it's nicer to see people at, at the other end. These are the trainings I have undertaken. This is what I do. I work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis for weight loss through a plant-based diet and lifestyle. Um, I have e-learning courses, um, which makes it easy for people to learn from wherever they are. And um, I have a juice cleanse and other programs which I come up with regularly, which are group-based, group coaching kind of um, uh, activities. And I have uh, I conduct workshops for individuals and corporates. This is what I do. I'm based out of Bombay and I've been doing this work for uh, almost six years now. And um, this is the agenda today. What are the benefits of fermentation? How fermentation impacts gut health, essentials of fermentation and live demo of sauerkraut. So just to give you an idea that our gastrointestinal tract starts from our mouth and ends at our anus. And when we talk of gut health, we obviously think more about the stomach and the, uh, you know, the intestines, but our um, entire gastrointestinal tract is important for us to look after because uh, it's full of microorganisms and they constitute our gut flora or gut microbiome or gut microbiota. So it's in our mouth, esophagus, stomach, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, small intestine, large intestine, and rectum. And 95% of our uh, body's microbiota is found in the gut. And we have trillions, that's 100 with maybe four, five, six zeros. And uh, these micro, uh, the, the gut microbiota includes bacteria, viruses, non-pathogenic fungi, and um, there are more of those than human cells in our body. So think about it. Are we more microbes or are we more human? Yeah. And these um, microbes play a very important role in our digestion, in our uh, metabolic functions, in our immune functions and neurological functions. So the Gut health per se can be defined as a state of well-being or absence of gastrointestinal distress. And it can it is largely dependent on these microbes. Okay. That's how it's like we're talking about big elephant and a small ant. You know, that's the kind of um, comparison, but they constitute our gut health. And we also know that most of our immunity resides in our gut. So it has that advantage as well. And when our gut health is not okay, we have we can have skin issues like eczema, acne, psoriasis. We can have thyroid issues. You can have weight fluctuation. You can have liver uh, issues. Uh, we can have a toxin overload. You, your cardiovascular health can be compromised because of it. Your immune health can be compromised. Even things like depression, Alzheimer's, insomnia are connected to gut health. And of course, our overall health, which is fatigue, low energy, obesity, diarrhea, constipation. Um, most people complain about these things, bloating, etc. It's all connected to our gut. And in our gut, the microbes have to be in a certain ratio. 85% should be the good bacteria and 15% is ideally the bad bacteria. 
both are required for our gut to be balanced. But when they go out of balance, then there's a imbalance and that's called dysbiosis. And that's where you start having issues like leaky gut or IBS or candida, etc. Now, when it comes to, I know the slide is small, but I'll explain what are probiotics. We've heard of this, right? Probiotics. Most of us eat dahi as a form of our probiotics. And so they are basically the friendly, good, live bacteria and yeast that line our digestive tract. And they give us the symbiotic relationship in our body. And this together takes care of our immune health, digestive health, brain health, and everything else. So like I mentioned earlier, we have 70% of our immune system in our gut. The beneficial bacteria and the live bacteria that goes into our system is what contributes to our overall gut health. Now, imagine if, if, if many of you were here right now or have actually asked to do it, but maybe Sonia, you could do it and whoever else can. If you can go to your kitchen and get a glass, a drinking water glass, which is transparent and a, a, a jar of dal, any dal. If you could quickly uh, go to the kitchen, I, I can wait. I'm back. Uh, whoever else is here can also let me know that Pranay Prana has joined in later. Hi, Pranay. If you've heard my instructions and if you uh, are back, uh, let me know. We'll just wait for 30 seconds more because you were really quick going and coming back. All right, so now in your hand, show me the glass, the empty glass. Hi, Brijesh. Okay, now take the jar of dal and pour some into the glass. Thank you, Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Now that glass is our gut, okay? And these are the good bacteria that are already in the gut. Okay. Now add a little bit more into the jar of the dal. That's it. Now what you added right now is a probiotic rich food. Now this could be sauerkraut. It could be plant-based curd. It could be a kanji. It could be anything which is fermented, kimchi. So that's full of the probiotic live bacteria. And when we consume it, it gets added to the already existing good bacteria in our system. So it's very important to consume probiotics on a regular basis because you might wonder why do we need to eat this at all? Why do we need to even do anything extra if we're already eating healthy? Uh, we all tend to take antacids sometimes. We tend to take antibiotics sometimes. Uh, we face a lot of stress in our day-to-day -day life. We eat packaged food. We eat refined sugar, sometimes artificial sweeteners, things with color, with preservatives. All these affect our gut health. All these are detrimental to our healthy gut microbiome. So because there is say wear and tear or because there are these factors which are not good for gut health, which we are at some point or the other dealing with. This is like an insurance where you're taking care that you're doing the bare minimum to maintain the gut health at a certain level. So is it clear why we need to eat 
probiotic rich food yeah now these foods are never eaten in a large quantity they are eaten in a small quantity especially the ones with live bacteria now idli dosa dhokla um all these indian are regular indian fermented foods are great to eat but they are great as a form of easier to digest forms of food we can't really attribute the same probiotic goodness to these foods because they go through the cooking process that we put it through so the live bacteria doesn't really survive through that cooking process so much so am i saying not to eat these things not at all i'm saying please continue to eat them but understand that they are a pre digested easier to digested form of food but they do not count as probiotic food just because they are fermented food okay so uh, sauerkraut is a raw fermented food which means the organisms are live in them okay any questions so far any one of you can put it in the chat we've covered just a gist of why gut health is important what are probiotics they are the beneficial live bacteria and why are they important for us okay i'll continue uh, sharing screen if anyone has questions uh, please put them i'll check as i talk so there are many families of beneficial bacteria lactobacillus bifidobacterium bulgaricus there are many kinds we don't need to memorize the names we just need to know that we have many colonies of these uh, bacteria and a varied plant based fiber rich diet gives us enough opportunity to feed these various families and when we eat a diverse diet uh, and I, when i mean diverse i don't mean eating japanese and thai and uh you know mexican i don't mean that there's nothing wrong with that if you like to eat that food i mean by the kinds of vegetables grains fruits uh legumes that we eat because different foods give us different soluble and insoluble fiber and that helps our gut health and the growth of uh, the microbiomes microbiome um uh, the fermented foods most of us know what is fermentation it's actually just a process Uh, wherein the bacteria yeast or other microorganisms convert the carbohydrates or the starch in the food and feed on it the natural bacteria just feed on this and they create lactic acid and this whole method or this whole naturally occurring process uh, creates beneficial enzymes b vitamins probiotic bacterial strains and it also preserves the food now people have also asked me is beer healthy is alcohol healthy because it is um, you know it is fermentation but it's not the same thing this is naturally occurring uh, it does not have sugar in it i mean some um, fermented foods do contain sugar but uh, the way um, all these are processed today they cannot be considered from the, uh, you know uh, anywhere from the health angle as fermented foods okay they are fermented foods yes but they are not for health so what are the benefits of eating these foods the increased enzyme content which helps to absorb nutrients and digest food better can i please put yourself on mute thank you um team vp can you put can i on mute or can i mute no oh, i'm not able to mute ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಅಂತ ಇಕ್ಕಿ ಜೇನು ಕೂಡ ಬೆಚ್ಚಿ ಹ್ಮ್ 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 all right so um it's safe because the lactic acid created during the fermentation process is one of the world's best bacteria killer so it 
kills all the pathogenic bacteria like E. coli, making it safe to consume raw uh, vegetables. It preserves food and it also increases the nutrient value. This is the reasons why fermented foods are good. And when you properly ferment vegetables, they're actually safer than raw vegetables because these, these raw vegetables, we know how the vegetables come to us, right? They are kept on the road, the, you know, uh, open sewage or, you know, all kinds of exposure happens to the vegetables. And once you thoroughly follow the process of fermentation, which I'll be teaching you, you will realize that nothing bad can actually exist in that if you have followed the, then it's actually safer. Yeah. So incorporate more probiotic fermented food into your diet and put these live good for your organisms back where they belong in your gut. This is by Dr. Frank Lipman. He is a functional medicine doctor and he believes that the gut is the center of all, <clears throat> all of health. And anyway, as per Ayurveda, you know, all disease begins with your digestion. You know, digestion is the root of good health or ill health. So I'm quickly going to move on to basics of fermentation. These are the two very simple and important steps that you need to follow. Sterilize the equipment, immerse the glass jars, lids. It's best to um, ferment in glass jars rather than plastic. I mean, plastic is definitely out always in glass. And you immerse the jars and the lids in a pot of hot boiled water for five minutes. Or you can also pour this hot water into the insides of the jar and lids and sterilize the chopping board knife by just pouring the water on it and wiping. So this way, the surfaces are clean. Then for sterilizing the vegetables, we don't want the veggies to be in hot water, just lukewarm water with a tablespoon of salt or natural apple cider vinegar and let the vegetables sit in this water for 10 minutes or so. That way, again, all the areas of your vegetables are clean. And we are starting with a clean slate when it comes to the actual vegetable. You can uh, you can um, cut after you have sterilized. Don't sterilize after they are cut because then the nutrients will uh, be you know lost in the water. So it's demo time. I'm going to show you how to make sauerkraut. Before I do that, any questions? And I I would like to take them before I proceed. Won't the live bacteria die in the stomach before reaching the gut? That's an excellent question, Ekta. Not only can they die on the way, our acid, our hydrochloric acid in our stomach is also very strong, okay? But some still survive through that process and that is what still makes a difference, okay? So you're absolutely right. There's only a small percentage that survives, but that's still good enough than not having it at all. Hi, Arjita. All right, so, so I'm going to die. Sorry. The gut is, uh, so you missed that part in the beginning. The gut is the entire digestive region. The gastrointestinal tract starts from the mouth to the anus, and the gut is mainly the intestines and the stomach. All of it, but largely the intestine. So I'm going to now move on to actually showing you the recipe. If there are any, any questions before that, um, I can take them up. And I have to change the camera angle in order to show you the yeah. crowd. So I'm going to put yeah. my camera off yeah. for now. Yeah. 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 Ishi, no blackie. You are all. So you can't even see blackie.
and I'm going to start with cabbage. This cabbage has been cleaned, like I explained. This jar has been cleaned as well. And now this is freshly grated, finely grated cabbage. And we're going to take salt. The recipe you will receive at the end uh, by tomorrow latest um, on your email, the exact measurements you will get. Take salt. Take natural salt like rock salt or Himalayan pink salt, avoid iodized salt, and just massage the cabbage like this. You can hear how crunchy it is right now. Just keep on scrubbing it. And do it for a few minutes. This is very, very therapeutic and nice to do. So just keep on scrubbing and let it sit for a while. I'm going to show you what it looks like after a little while. Now this cabbage, I put salt in a couple of hours ago. and I want to show you how much water it releases. Can you see? Those of you who can see, can you put a thumbs up? Great. So this water that the cabbage has released is its own water. We haven't added water to this. Through the process of osmosis, the cabbage releases its own water because of the salt. And this is the water that we want. We're not going to add any water on, on of its own. I mean, we're not going to add external water. And in the jar, what we're going to do is we're going to add just one more ingredient, which is apple cider vinegar, uh, which is natural and unpasteurized organic. In traditional sauerkraut, the only addition that is added is uh, dill leaves or um, caraway seeds. These are the only two things that are actually added to sauerkraut in the traditional German recipe. Uh, sauerkraut means sour cabbage and because it's fermented, it is sour. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna transfer all the cabbage into this jar. If you follow the recipe and the instructions to the T, you will find it's one of the easiest recipes to make. And you really can't go wrong if you follow the instructions. Sorry, the water that was there, the salty water, I'm adding it. And I'm now gonna add the apple cider vinegar. I'm just gonna like pour it over. And the next step is very important we're gonna use a clean leaf of a cabbage, which has also been washed and cleaned the same way that we did the uh, cabbage before it was grated. And I'm gonna place it on top. This helps to cover the top of the surface of the grated cabbage, and I'm gonna press down. I'm gonna press all of this down. So that nothing is protruding, everything is under the level of the brine. Brine is the salted water that has been generated by putting salt and cabbage together. So I'm gonna bring the jar closer to you. You're gonna see bubbles here and you're gonna see the, the water content of the cabbage, okay? So basically as days go by, you will find that this cabbage leaf on top also will become soft and easier to push down. Right now it's a bit crisp. It's crisp, that's why it's still a bit stiff and fresh. And what we do is after we have put the cabbage leaf on top, we cover the lid 
we need not tighten it completely but you need not keep it like very loose you just make sure it's lightly screwed so that there is there's still air gaps so if there is a build up the air can come out uh, your jar can be smaller you don't need to have so much of a gap but your liquid should always be covering the cabbage like this yeah every uh, day press down after the fourth day taste it taste the ca grated cabbage not the leaf because the leaf will still be quite hard and it usually takes between four to five to seven days depending on the weather uh, those pointers also are in the recipe so you can follow those and after the fourth day you start tasting if you like the taste and you find it tangy enough your sauerkraut is ready now this is my ready sauerkraut and this is the one i just put together i'm going to show you what the leaf looks like in this one the leaf has become soft my sauerkraut is with its water on top and it's ready to be eaten now this is very convenient to um pair with even dal chawal or on sandwiches in salads i like to use the sauerkraut as a part of my salad dressing or salad uh, topping my salad with it because it takes away the need to add salt so that's why um, it's something i find very easy and very versatile to add to any of our food. Uh, whoever is on the iphone please mute yourself so that's the rest yeah what places are the parker logo parker oh uh i have a course which in which i teach more than 50 fermented foods if any of you uh, would like to learn more i have detailed recipes with how much quantities can be eaten what equipment you need do's and don'ts and everything is mentioned on the course the pictures that you see on the left are the ones that i teach i teach uh, fermented foods as well as fermented drinks and um, most of them are very very easy to make so if any of you are interested you can scan the qr code and register there is a question uh, after very good question ekta after it's ready you store it in the fridge uh when you store something which is fermented in the fridge it stalls fermenting so fermented food cannot stay out after it's ready till it is fermented you have to keep it out i also have a sugar detox coming up uh in a couple of weeks uh lots of people in the past have done it and have been able to reset their relationship with sugar uh most of us are unhappy with how much sugar we crave for or how much sugar we eat so this will help you understand why we crave sugar uh, what is it that um, you know we can do to have a healthier relationship with sugar and how to balance our cravings and if any of you would like to consult with me on a one to one basis or attend any of uh, my forthcoming workshops you get a special offer so you can message back on the email that you have uh, got the communication from us from and yeah it would be great if you could follow me on facebook instagram linkedin put a review on google or linkedin wherever you can uh, i really really appreciate it i'm going to go back to uh, the fermented foods course if any if you are interested you can look at it other than um, dill leaves or jitta nothing else is added or caraway seeds caraway seeds i did not find um, you know in my live workshops when i would get people to taste the various fermented foods i didn't find most of us cared for the flavor too much so i prefer to just use uh, dill leaves or uh, you can flavor your sauerkraut in whichever way you like you can use garlic ginger chilies even garam masala but in the whole form and give it a nice indian flavor shelf life is about a month but the quantity i have given you you should be able to finish in about 10 15 days and i'm just going to want to move on to the qr code for the sugar detox 
if any of you are interested. Or if you think there's a friend who might be interested, please share with them. Yeah, and that's my contact number, email address, website. I'd really like at this point for people to put on their cameras and have a conversation. Let me know whether it's clear for you how to make SAR crowd. What were your key takeaways? Is SAR crowd good for people with IBS is a question. So it really depends on the condition of the person, how severe the IBS is. Uh, in, in milder digestive issues, fermented foods definitely help. But when it reaches a stage like uh, IBS or uh, Crohn's disease or an autoimmune condition or a leaky gut, it's better to check with uh, you know, your doctor or your health practitioner before consuming sauerkraut if you have IBS. If you are a healthy person with just minor issues like, so these are the four issues if you have, you can still safely consume it. If you have gas, constipation, bloating, acidity, you can still consume sauerkraut. The best time to consume it would be at lunch, one teaspoon, and you can gradually add it, make it to two teaspoons. Uh, Bridges, not on an empty stomach. We, I think I'll, I read your mind. I answered that just now. Jahida, you joined in later. I hope you catch up with the recording. Any more questions that I could take? How many, how many people feel confident that they can make sauerkraut now? I'd like a thumbs up. Yes, it's good for PCOS. Great. Can uh, B12 deficiency be fulfilled? Um, so B12, there is, there is definitely some amount of B12 in fermented foods, but unfortunately it's not enough as a reliable source. You would need to supplement uh, in addition to having fermented foods. Thank you, Arjita. Do that. So, you know, um, whatever you can do to you know, spread a little message about my work, whether it is posting on Instagram, following me, putting a review on Google, all this would really, really mean a lot to me. So if, it develop, if you're uh, getting fungus inside, um, just try the instructions, try as per the instructions I've given, follow the guidelines of, you know, sterilizing it properly, um, cleaning the jar, and you shouldn't have a problem. And honestly, that's why the batch size that I've given you, the quantity is very little, even if it does, I mean, it shouldn't, but if it does, you won't feel so terrible, you can re, re, remake it. You're welcome. You're very welcome. How many people understand how much gut health has an impact on the rest of our health? If you do, say why for yes in the chat. And name some probiotic rich foods that you know. You're absolutely right, Vijesh. 80% of the serotonin hormones, hormones come from the gut. Which and also the head and the gut, brain and the gut are constantly in communication with each other. Ambali, yes. It's there on my course, my fun with fermented foods course. Um, the links to all uh, the programs that I mentioned are on my website. 
I can screen share them in any case. Pickle is not really a ferment unless it's a fermented pickle. If it's just a regular pickle, it's a pickle. There is no probiotic life in it. Kimchi, kanji, yes. Kombucha, yes. Just a word of caution about kombucha. It does contain sugar. So if you have IBS or you have serious health conditions, it should not be consumed in large quantities or on a regular basis. It's fine for healthy people to consume instead of uh, you know, a soft drink or a cola or something. Kefir is great. Coconut water kefir especially. Yeah, that's the fermented foods course QR code. And this is the sugar detox QR code. All right. So it's a Friday night. I'm sure you have other things to get back to. Thank you join, for joining in at this hour. Uh, I actually kept it at this hour so that people would be done with uh, hopefully dinner and are free to join in. Uh, I expected a lot more people to join in live, but hopefully they'll catch up uh, on the recording. Thank you very much. Uh, please do try the sauerkraut. The recipe will come to you uh, via email and um, tag me when you make your sauerkraut. And more important, eat the sauerkraut and reap the benefits. Thank you very much for joining in. All the very best. Take care. Bye-bye.